afloat with Henry Morgan. Dolores Pizarro persuades her father to allow her to go to Jamaica, masquerading as Antoinette de Lacy, kinswoman to Sir Thomas Motford, governor of Jamaica. While there, she hopes to trap Henry Morgan and retrieve her Aztec necklet, which he has taken. Sir Thomas, not knowing that the ship in which his kinswoman was sailing has been taken by the Spanish, sends Morgan out to escort it back to Port Royal. After an unsuccessful search, Morgan sets out for home, when a small boat is sighted adrift. They find the only occupant is a woman who says she is Antoinette de Lacy. But the renegade Spaniard Dietz, who sees her come aboard, has a feeling he has seen or met her before. You say your name is Antoinette de Lacy? Yes. Oh, monsieur, I have had a terrible experience. How comes you're adrift in a small boat like this? I was sailing on the Elizabeth Ann. The ship, she was taken by the Spanish. Uh, that is as I feared. Oh, it was terrible. I cannot bear to think of it even now. The confusion, the fighting, men bleeding and dying. I was terrified. But the captain of the ship, he came to me and said, Don't worry, mademoiselle. You will escape from the hands of these fiends. I have a boat. It is my duty to get you safely to Port Royal. He put me in the boat and we cast off. And suddenly, a stray ball from a musket, it hit him and he, he fell overboard and sank. I have been alone in the boat ever since. Drifting. A harrowing tale, mademoiselle. But you need have no more fears now. You're in the hands of the very man who was sent to safeguard you back to Port Royal. You are very kind, monsieur. To whom do I have to give thanks for this generosity? Morgan is the name, mademoiselle. Henry Morgan. Captain Henry Morgan. Oh, it is strange that I meet you so soon. You've heard of me, mademoiselle de Lacy? Oh, oh, yes. On the ship coming out, they told me about you. He told me that you are a man to be feared. Amongst men, yes, a man to be feared. But amongst women, I have the heart of a dove. It is very fortunate that I should have met you so soon. I hope, Captain Morgan, that we will become friends. Perhaps, but I'm not used to ladies' company. Oh, but I'm forgetting my manners, keeping you up here on deck. You must be nigh famished and wanting rest. Allow me, mademoiselle, to escort you to my own quarters. Have no fears. You'll be safe. I have no fears now that I am in your care, Captain Morgan. And on the outskirts of the crowd, Dietz's black eyes are clouded in wonder as he probes and tries to capture that strange recognition. How could I know her? She has never been in this part of the world. Yet seen her before, I'm sure I have. As Morgan takes Dolores to his quarters, voices are raised as they comment on her story. And comment even more on the woman herself. Now, oh, a beauty if ever there was one. But not for likes of us, eh? No, <laughs> but seeing her reminds one that Kitty is back in Port Royal, doesn't it? Don't speak of her in the access here unless you want a knife in your ribs. You talk not about Kitty. Remember, she is for me and me only. And for the rest of the Caribbean buccaneers. <laughs> <laughs> you shut your mouth or else I slit your throat. You don't scare us now, dear. Your place beside Captain Morgan has been taken by somebody else. You are one of us now. But not for long. You'll see. That's not the only place he's lost. I reckon Kitty's eyes are looking past him, Neil. I was last to leave a dolphin tavern that night. Dear, it was a pity you was knocked unconscious. It was an education to see Kitty go to work on young Hunter. What do you mean? Tell me what happened before I strangle you. You fellas make him let go of my throat. Oh, master, you swine. You men get about your work. Under the roar of Morgan's voice and at his sudden and unexpected appearance, the men melt away like snow before the sun. Diaz to his quiet corner where he can revel in his self-pity, his hate for Hunter, and to give way to his new jealousy as to what happened between Kitty and Hunter while he lay unconscious. Vicious, cruel, treacherous thoughts fill his mind. He will die. Oh, not quickly. No, I will find a way to kill him slowly, treacherously, and have him know that I am killing him. Have him scream for sudden death. And then I'll make it slower still. While Dietz feeds and nourishes his hate, the sun sinks lower and the breeze holds well. And Jamaica looms up as though out of the very sea. On deck, Geoffrey Hunter watches the approaching land, but doesn't see it. His mind is in another island set in the North Sea. He is unconscious of the fact that Dolores has come up on deck and is standing beside him. That is Jamaica ahead, is it not? My apologies, Mademoiselle. I can hear your approach. 
I was thinking of something else. Are you rested and more happy in your mind now? Oh, but yes. I have been very lucky when I think of what my fate might have been. Oh, it doesn't bear thinking on. Let us talk of more pleasant things. You are, of course, one of Captain Morgan's friends, else you would not be up here on the poop. I think I am a trusted member of his crew. A seaman life must be so very exciting. Yes, suppose it must be. Tell me about Port Royal, Jamaica. Remember, I have never been there. What is it like? I don't know very much about it. Yes. Are you trying to be rude to me? Mademoiselle, please no, I... I can't explain why my manner seems so abrupt. You must just believe me when I say I know nothing of Jamaica or Port Royal. I know nothing of a life at sea. And yet you are a trusted servant of Captain Morgan? Oh, come, monsieur. You can talk to me. From what I have seen of the other members of the crew, you seem different. You are a man of breeding. I am just an ordinary man. The same as anyone else aboard the ship, Mademoiselle de Lacy. I am going to be a stranger in a strange island. I feel that perhaps out of all the men aboard the ship, I could make you my friend. Especially as you are a close associate of Captain Morgan, who tells me he is a great friend of my kinsman, Sir Thomas Motford. You will find plenty of friends in Port Royal, Mademoiselle, without looking for them in the ranks of buccaneers. You say that so bitterly. Is this not a life of your own choosing? Who in this world has a life of their own choosing? I have come to you speaking quite friendly because I am grateful that this lovely ship saved me from a possibly watery grave. And you are rude to me. I am not rude, mademoiselle. I'm a realist. You are a kinswoman of the governor of Jamaica, Sir Thomas Mufford. You will become his hostess. I am a buccaneer. And I'm a man whose mind is full of memories. Piqued at this man's strange and unaccountable behavior, Dolores moves from his side. But already in the short time she's been aboard the Flying Gull, she has gathered that Geoffrey Hunter is a man that Morgan trusts implicitly, and therefore is a man whose confidence she must win. Pretending to watch the approaching island, she slyly watches him from out of the corner of her eye, and soon knows that he is watching her in the same manner. But outward appearances are deceptive. She cannot read what is in his mind. Elegance, breeding, class. She has them all. Everything that I once knew and took for granted. All gone from me, never to be recalled. Those men down there in the waist of the ship, beasts, treacherous beasts. They are my kind from now on. Why must this Antoinette de Lacy come to remind me of things I must not remember? Not knowing what he is thinking, Dolores takes Geoffrey's sly interest as an invitation and moves once more to his side, but Geoffrey gives no indication that he realizes it. After a moment, he roughly turns and leaves her. Two bright pink spots heighten the color of Dolores' cheeks. Her black eyes sparkle like a spark from flint. Her small foot taps in the dip. So he thinks to treat me like that. No man can give me such treatment. Angrily, she is about to recall him to her side when she remembers... <laughs> I am no longer Dolores Pizarro, whose every whim is a command. I am Antoinette de Lacy, demure and maidenly. I must not let that man worry me. My vanity must not let me ruin all. Confidently... And with a crooked smile of anticipation, Dolores turns and watches the approaching island. Already, white ocean breakers are discernible, breaking over the reef which guards the entrance into Port Royal. Quickly, the flying gull swings round as a helmsman feels his way between the reef and the opening. A flag breaks from the stern and stretches itself in the wind. Canvas is taken in and furled. Once again, the helmsman swings the helm, and the ship sails on to the headland and in turn into Port Royal. A lifeboat is lowered so that a messenger can go ahead to give news to Sir Thomas Modford. Slowly, the ship, under a minimum of canvas, glides into her berth. Morgan, with Dolores at his side, stands on deck, pointing out matters of interest. Sheltered behind a mast, Geoffrey Hunter watches Dolores. Loneliness, like a heavy stone, lies in his breast. The way she moves and talks and turns her head reminds him of another life. A life which he hoped he was forgetting. I have been pushed so low I can never return. How to forget? Heaven, show me a way to forget. Suddenly, as he watches Dolores, another memory stirs in his mind. A tavern. Dirty, grimy, and smelly. Two arms around his neck. Soft, 
moist lips on his. At that moment, I did forget. The flying gull lies at her berth. Geoffrey quietly slips ashore. He is the first away. It is not yet dark. The dolphin tavern is empty except for two or three. It is dim inside, and for a minute his eyes do not adjust themselves to this half-light. And it is with surprise that he hears Kitty speak. So, it's Mr. High and Mighty Hunter come back. Kitty, I want to talk to you. Talk to me? What sort of a man do you think yourself to be? You must listen to me, Kitty. I have far too much to do to listen to the likes of you. I have come to apologize. Uh, apologize to me? Why, do you know, Mr. Hunter, it, it's the first time in my life a, a man's ever apologized to me. Let's go to where I found you and Dietz. All right. Follow me. Apologize? <laughs> this is a new experience for me. Men that come here, Mr. Hunter... Don't apologize for anything. You mind if I pull these curtains, too? Not at all. Well, what's troubling you? It's impertinence on my part to ask you to even listen to me. I am a stranger to you, Kitty, but I'm in great distress. I want to forget. I want to forget that I was ever what you once called me, a, a gentleman. These men who come here to this tavern, they're my people now. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about, do you? Sure. Sure, I understand. I understand much more than you think. Do you want to forget? Well, the best way for a man to forget is in a woman's arms. To have them slowly climb around his neck, like this. And to have their lips as close as this. Oh, Kitty. Kitty, please make me forget. <laughs> Has Kitty forgotten the vow she made against this man? That will be revealed in the next episode of A Float with Henry Morgan. Mm -hmm.